Welcome to Electron Online. Our next problem is an LC circuit problem. There's no voltage source in there, at least not as a component, but there's an induced voltage because of the changing magnetic field flux through the circuit itself. To solve this problem is a little bit tricky. You really have to think through it. It's not that difficult once you realize how to approach it, but that's where the difficulty comes in. How do you approach a problem like this? So let's take a look. Consider an LC circuit with inductance L equals 0.1 Henry and capacitance 10 to the minus 3 farads. Kept on a plane. The area of the circuit is 1 square meter. It is placed in a constant magnetic field of strength B sub naught, which is perpendicular to the plane of the circuit. At time t equals 0, the magnetic field strength starts increasing linearly as B equals B sub naught plus beta t with beta being 0.04 tesla per second. The maximum magnitude of the current in the circuit is, and they give it to us, we're supposed to give the answer in milliamps. Now the circuit drawing didn't come with the problem, although that's a fairly simple circuit to draw. We simply draw a loop. The area of the loop is equal to one square meter. Area equals one meter squared. And notice it has an inductance and a capacitance, so we assume that the current end up, ends up going back and forth and back and forth, typically. However, in this case, we have a magnetic field that is directed perpendicular to the loop and it increases in strength. And then we realize that when the flux through a loop changes, either increases or decreases, we'll have an induced EMF, an induced voltage. So let's calculate what that induced voltage is first. So the EMF induced is equal to minus, although we don't care about the minus, we care about the magnitude, the change in the flux, in this case the magnetic flux, over time. And of course the magnetic flux, and we're just going to take the absolute value of that like this, so simply we can leave the negative sign out, the magnetic flux means it's the DDT of the changing area or the magnetic field strength multiplied together. Now in this case the area is constant, so this can be written as, um, oop, no, with the A first, the area, which is a constant, times dB dt. So now we're looking for the changing magnetic field, and notice they told us what B is. So since B is equal to B sub naught plus 0.04t, and we want to know dB dt, notice that's a constant, there's a t, so it's simply 0.04. And that goes in here, so then we have the EMF induced, is equal to the area, which is equal to one square meter, times the change of magnetic field with respect to time, which is 0.04. So we have 0.04 volts as the induced EMF, the induced voltage in the circuit. All right, what do we do next? Well, we need to have the Kirchhoff voltage summation equation as we go around the loop. Now we have also have to, of course, include the EMF. So when we do a when we go around the circuit and we sum up all the voltages, we have the EMF induced minus the voltage across the inductor, which is L D I D T, minus the voltage across the capacitor, which is Q over C equals zero. So that's the equation that adds up all the voltages around the loop. Now, notice what is going to happen. We're going to get a current, and initially, the current will be stopped by the inductor because the inductors, they oppose a change in the current. So initially, the current will slowly rise because of the inductor. And as the inductor then, as the current then gets to a steady state, as we reach a maximum induced voltage and the opposing voltage from the inductor begins to drop, then you have a maximum voltage pushing current through, of course, filling up the capacitor. And as the capacitor fills up, then of course you'll have the push back on the capacitor. So what's going to happen is that the current, if you were to draw the current, the current increase is going to look like this and probably will decrease at some point and it'll reach some maximum value. So this would be I versus time. And that's the value we're looking for. How big is that, right? So what is the value of that maximum current? We then realize that when we reach maximum current at this point, at that point we know that di dt must equal zero. The change in the curve with respect to time, which is the slope of that curve, will reach zero. So therefore we know that's going to be zero. 
and we can unplug that in here and therefore the voltage across the inductor will then diminish to zero as we reach maximum current. So then the equation becomes the EMF minus Q over C equals zero. And that means we can then find how much charges on the capacitor at that time because we know EMF, EMF is for uh, 0.04 volts and we know the value of the capacitor. So then in this case, we can take this equation and solve it for Q and so then we have EMF, EMF is equal to Q over C or C equals Q times the EMF induced. In this case, Q is 10 to the minus 3 and the EMF induced is equal to 0 0.04. So that means that the, um, oh, I have this reverse, sorry about that. So I have Q equals C times that. And so then that means that Q is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 5, and that would be uh, Coulombs. So now we have a value for the charge of the capacitor when the maximum current is reached. Then the next thing we should do is then realize how much energy will be stored on the inductor and on the capacitor. And of course that energy in an LC circuit tends to go back and forth. And the maximum energy on the inductor will equal the maximum energy on the capacitor. So the maximum energy on the inductor is going to be one half L times I squared. The maximum energy on the capacitor is going to be one half Q squared over C. And we know that the maximum in both cases will be equal to each other. So what we want to do then is we want to solve this for I, knowing L, knowing C, and knowing the Q when the I maximum is reached, then where the IDT is equal to zero. And we know what the Q is, we just got that over here. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for I. First of all, we get rid of the one halves. Then we can write that I squared is equal to Q squared divided by LC, or I is equal to Q divided by the square root of L times C. So then we we'll come up here. I think this pen is beginning to die on me. So let's try this one. So that means that I, the current that we're looking for, is equal to Q, the charge, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by the square root of L. L is 0 0.1 and C is 10 to the minus 3. All right, so that means that I is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by the square root of 10 to the minus 4. Now the square root 10 to the minus 4 is 10 to the minus 2. So if I is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 10 to the minus 2. And finally, simplifying that, I have I is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 3. And of course, that's milliamps. So therefore, I equals 4.00 milliamps. And that is the answer that will go in there, which will make the problem correct. So again, it's kind of a tricky problem. It's hard to think of this concept of that's how you're supposed to solve it. But first of all, you find the EMF induced based upon the size of the circuit. The area is one square meter. We're given the, ch the equation that describes the B field, the magnetic field. We take the change of magnetic field respect to time, and so we get the EMF induced. Then we set up the Kirchhoff voltage equation around the circuit, including the EMF induced, but we realized that at maximum current, the DIDT goes to zero. That means this term goes to zero. So we have EMF minus Q over C equals zero. We solve that equation for Q, the charge of the capacitor, and then we realized to find the current, we can set the energy stored on the inductor equal to the energy stored on the capacitor. You know that it goes back and forth, but when they reach their maximum, then we can set them equal to each other. And then at that point, we realize that I must equal 4 milliamps. So it's a little convoluted, but that's how the problem is solved.